Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a, the Massiverse Stiding card game by Solus Game Studios. This is by Brian McKay and this is the uh, powered by Pocket Paragon system. Basically, if you played Pocket Paragons before, then you know exactly how to play the Massiverse card game. It has changed, there are new characters in the game, each character functions differently, but it is still a two-player head-to-head rock, paper, scissors style battling card game. You can play either a singular game, or you can play a kind of legacy style game where you choose up to three different characters, and your characters can retain abilities from previously felled characters. Your objective is to defeat your opponent, make their opponent's HP go from 10 to zero, and if you can do that before yours hit zero, you win the game. There's also some unique abilities and insta-death cards, which I'll talk about in my review. I reviewed this a lot, so I'm only gonna cover the very, very, very basics on how to play the game and the basic setup, and then we'll go into what I think about it. So like I said, I've covered this game a number of times from its previous manifestations, uh, the Pocket Paragons universe of games, and there's a multitude of them, and they are also a different uh, variety of IPs that are attached to Pocket Paragons, this being another one. Uh, but this game is a fighting card game. You're going to take a character, or characters if you're playing the legacy mode. You're going to take a dial, which is gonna indicate your health, which is always at 10 and your energy which always starts at zero and then your hand of cards these are the cards that you can utilize some of them are going to be passive effects that stay on the field while you're playing the game others will be uh, unique uh, ultimate abilities that will be stored and can only be utilized until your energy reaches a certain point and then the rest of them are going to be colored cards these cards can range from fighting cards to winged cards to knowledge cards and so on and so forth uh, and you're going to be basically playing a card face down and then your opponent will play a card face down. From there you'll flip the cards over, check to see if one card counters another and if it does that card will usually be nullified and the cards that go through will do their damage and their abilities. Now there's a variety of things and changes that happen based on the different characters you play as. Some characters can prevent other players from doing certain things when cards are played. Some counters do not actually go into effect against other characters uh, and all the unique abilities and ultimate are different for each of the characters. Passive abilities can be flipped at certain points for certain characters, and uh, some card cards are exhausted, which means as opposed to just being like knocked out for a turn, they'll get knocked out for two turns. So there is a variety of different things in this game that change up, and I want to cover that mainly. I'll talk about basically what the game is like, and what do I think about this specific version of the Pocket Paragon system, the Massiverse card game, and whether or not you should pick this title up. There are eight characters that I have to show you, and each of them function very differently. Well, let's get into it. So the Massive Verse fighting card game has the same pocket paragon system. It's the characters, you're going to have your main cards, any passive ability that you might have, as well as your ultimate, which is usually stored. But they're all different, and in this game it's explained that way as well. We have all the different characters, and of course I love the character cards, with the art, the explanation of what the character does, the best type of affinity that it has based on its specific uh, usage, uh, which oh, in this case here, it's the fighting symbol. He's really good with this card. And then his uh, advancement. How advanced is the character? One star is for newer players or players who want an easier time understanding how the cards and how the cards affect and work with each other. To up to three stars, which is a very difficult character to learn how to play. Not necessarily better or worse, but just more complexity involved. So start with the ones, move to twos, and then maybe threes. Um, but this one here is cool. 001 is a card or a character that draws its strength from enemies when they gain energy. Uh, and you can never gain energy on your own from 001. Normally in the game, whenever you play a card down, your opponent plays a card down, and you guys flip, if yours counters theirs, they're going to lose their card and you're gonna do all the things on your card, and you're gonna gain energy. And that's kind of a way in which you can improve your energy, which you can utilize on some of your cards, or some of your ultimates will have a ready ability, which means that whenever you have the number indicated by ready uh, energy, you can take that card and put it into your hand. Um, and also in this game, it still focuses on the cards that have that kind of discard effect, where once you play the card, it's kind of gone if it has a certain type of symbol. But otherwise, you're basically playing cards, flipping them over, they go away, and then eventually you can get them back. And there's a variety of ways, but the main way is to rest. Just like in the other games, the rest will let you go ahead and ready all of your abilities that you have discarded. Um, and 
you do not gain energy for this character, but in general, you do. Uh, uh, the only problem with Rest is the same problem you have with all the rest of the characters, is they are going to have the opportunity to be executed. If you're not careful and you start getting rid of cards and players start to realize what cards you have left in your hand, when you choose to Rest, if they choose to use their Execute, you can instantly lose the game. Even if you have the most health and your opponent has the least health, it doesn't really matter. So each of these characters kind of function a little differently. He focuses on stealing energy when your opponents gain energy and taking these cards in and being able to utilize these cards. So for instance, Cosmic Slashing here has got a ready of two and it has the stun. If you counter an enemy ability, they have to exhaust the ability, which is instead of just putting it to the side, they put it to the side and tap it, which means on their next turn they un, uh, whenever they go to ready a card, and then they bring it back to their hand on the second time. So it's kind of like exhausting a character in Magic the Gathering. It, it gets stunned kind of thing, a stun counter on it, same kind of thing. If an enemy ability um, uh, uh, that matches an ability, if, if your enemy played an ability that matches an ability symbol on one of your exhausted abilities, you get to counter their ability. So he has a very powerful counter ability. Uh, and then you store this ability and you lose all your energy. So playing this makes you dump all your energy. But when you play this, it has a really unique effect that protects you in the game by based on the cards you have discarded. So it's an energy sucker. And he is the only one I've ever seen in all of the games that functions like this. Or you have Radiant Black. Radiant Black is a uh, ability character who's able to survive executions, giving him a last shot at redemption. Basically how this character works is when you play a rest and somebody executes you, as opposed to losing instantly, he can bring all his cards back. But now he can never rest again. He can never get his cards back. And when he runs out of cards, he loses the game. So it's kind of like a, I'm coming back to life just for a short time to try and finish my foe, which has a really cool idea of theme on it. Uh, Rogue Sun, this one here is it can perverse through any challenge, even when his abilities are countered and he can still push through. So in this character's case, while some of the damage might not go through, certain things will happen regardless of whether this character gets countered or not. If you block damage, you deal an unblockable damage with certain cards. Or maybe if we're talking about his main abilities, it says, um, this round, ignore enemy effects that force you to exhaust abilities, even if this card is countered. So while some parts of being countered do affect him, other parts no longer do because he focuses on not giving too much of a shit about being countered. <laughs> and, and there is a variety of other characters as well. There's the Griffin. He's a more, definitely more complex character. Uh, he sacrifices his own cards to unleash more powerful combos. Uh, use, use this in the short term power carefully, but it can hurt you in the long run. And so you're going to have unique effects like uh, Memento Mori, which says that this ability does one more damage for each of your banished cards. Those are basically like the stun type of cards. Uh, store this ability and you'll lose all of your energy. And if this is a banished, you'll deal one unblockable damage. It's all about him banishing cards of his own in sacrifice to increase the value of the cards that he chooses to play. And they go on from there. Red Infernal Girl, talk about this one tier too, is, is much stronger when she's winning and confident, but if she ever falls behind, a lot of her power is lost. And so a lot of her cards are based on that. Vicious, if this counters an enemy ability, it deals double damage, so if she's ahead in that way. Swift, you get to ready a card if it counters an enemy's ability. A heal equal to the amount of the damage that you block. So all the cards focus on how you are able to perceive what your opponent's going to play. And if you can do so well, she gets really powerful. But when you start making mistakes, she easily and quickly can fall behind. And so there are a lot of really cool different characters with different abilities that function uniquely in the Massiverse fighting card game. Now don't, don't, don't fret and you know, don't expect more than what a Paragon's game is going to bring you. This is going to bring you a game with unique cards that feel like kind of a rock, paper, scissors style battle slash duel, utilizing more than just the three types. And instead now you've got up to six, as well as passive abilities, an ultimate that can come back to your hand. And there's a variety of other ways ultimates can function in this game as well and just the idea of kind of quick simple straightforward games that you're shooting down cards and you're finishing this game in about 10 minutes there's also the legacy version of the game which works really well with these characters here and as you can see there's four uh, five six seven eight characters and you're going to choose three and the only difference with the legacy mode just like all the rest is when you lose you get rid of your dude you can take one of his abilities and switch it with the same type of ability with the next character you're playing but it's only when you lose do you lose the character. So you can start to fall behind in this in the legacy style game. But you can also come back if you can win enough in a row.
It's a fun game. It's a straightforward game. All the artwork for this specific one is really great. This is actually probably my favorite art from all of the different Pocket Paragons powered cards, you know? And I also like the fact that they all kind of intertwine. And if you know how to play one set of the games, you know how to play all of them. And you can also mix and match them. I don't see a problem with why that would, would be an issue. I like that the game comes with these, these separators so you can play with it, all the different characters. And eventually when you get enough of them, kind of like Smash Up, you can have your own distinct areas for all the different cards. So I am looking forward to and hoping I see, maybe there already is one, but I never noticed it, a separator and a big box version for Pocket Paragons so I can have all of my characters all riled up into one and I can play and choose whatever I want from all the different game series. Nevertheless, the Massiverse fighting card game or Massiverse, yeah, is, 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 is really, really, really solid. I really, really enjoy the Pocket Paragon system primarily because it's quick, it's straightforward, the characters can be fairly complex, and it's really a battle of wills and wits. You're dropping down cards, trying to figure out what your opponents are going to play, and the game can end instantly or it can be a bit of a sweat fest. It's really up to you and how you choose to play the game, but overall, a solid experience every time. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game, or in this case, card game review for the Massiverse Fighting card game powered by Pocket Paragons. If you're interested in checking out this or any of my other videos for Pocket Paragons, I'll have links down below in the description, especially if you want to learn the game a little bit more in detail, because after making a few of these videos now, I didn't feel a need to continue to make a how to play. There's those videos for you there. And if you're interested, if you've seen more than one of our videos, especially more than one of our Pocket Paragon videos, you should hit the subscribe button. And of course, the bell, bell notification button. It does greatly help us out. And we do greatly appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to joining you in the Pocket Paragons universe with this one here, Massiverse, next time. <laughs>